Recognize the moment we're in. Pray the prayers you can pray. Pray the prayers you can pray for the next great move of God and be the first person to give Him right praise. Welcome to the One Cry Podcast, a nationwide call for spiritual awakening. And now, your hosts, Bill Eliff and Kyle Reno. Well, welcome to the One Cry Podcast. Here we are one more time in your ear, or you're watching us <laughs> by video. We are real close. That was a little weird. <laughs> Creepy. Uh, but we're glad to be with you today. And and Kyle, we love doing this. That's and, right. Uh, it's, a, it's such a privilege and honor, and I hope it's helping people. I, I know in a 30-minute podcast, you get just a little bit. Right. I hope it will stimulate you to go study. In fact, right. I, I would encourage you to go to our One Cry dot com uh, website, uh, you will find four or five different links where you can connect. If I want to know more about personal revival, church revival, corporate revival, national revival, and it will lead you to some resources and tools that can get you started. So I hope that you will do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're kind of talking about in these last few weeks, the necessary extraordinary movements of God. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, one of the reasons we're talking about this is we think it's upon us. Yeah, and no we, we're trying to help people get ready for this. Yes. Well, I would, man, I would really encourage our listeners, first off, I mean, uh, you, you're not getting any royalties off this. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the last two podcasts about Habakkuk 3 have been absolute revival truth gold. And so... Man, go back and learn and listen, and you'll learn the movements of God across history and how we hope to see Him move. Now, so what I want, I want to do for just a second here is take a back at three one more time and give you a few, uh, honestly, applications personally as a person. So Bill started us off here at, in verse two. It says, O oh Lord, I've heard the report of you and your work. O oh Lord, do I fear? Do I fear? Mm -hmm. Well, here, here's the first thought. Uh, recognize the report right now. Well, wow. like recognize the report of right now. What, what is happening? What is God doing? So Bill and I actually sat with a, a leader, a global leader, and he, he said, I got some facts for you. And I knew this. I was, I've been picking this up across uh, just different partnerships we have and people I know that's doing work across the world right now, I want to say to our listeners and get ready to get real happy, there is more mobilization happening right now in Great Commission work than any other time in human history. Wow. That's a report. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Recognize the report. More people are mobilizing for the sake of getting the gospel to far from God people right now than any other time in history. Now, the, the reality of that is they're just not coming from America. Mm -hmm. Now, we are sending some, but our brothers and sisters from Muslim backgrounds, uh, mm -hmm. our brothers and sisters in South America, our brothers and sisters in India are going for the sake of the gospel like never before. So, hey, the Lord is on the move. The Lord is on the move. I remember the first time I watched uh, Chronicles of Narnia uh, with my sons, and when, when they recognized that, it was, that Aslan was portraying Jesus— and not long after that, the report came, Aslan's on the move. So y'all look at me now. Aslan's on the move. Jesus is doing stuff in his church globally. Uh, there's reports right now. People, we used to talk in this sort of inconceivable thought of like, hey, getting the gospel to every people group on planet Earth. Well, organizations like seed companies and IMBs and sending agencies, there are meetings that are happening right now where they're talking tangibly about, hey, how can we get the good news of Jesus to people across the planet and know that each people group have had a chance to hear? Like, that's a right now report. Like, we're living in an era in which we can actually see Matthew 24, 14 accomplished. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's, that's a report. Recognize the report. I, I think you look at that globally, it's encouraging. Let me ask you this. What about nationally? Well, let me give you a report. You know, in light of what there is, um, 
there's more lostness in our country right now than any other time in history. That's a report. There's more confusion around fundamentals of human flourishing than ever before. Ever before. I mean, a report about our, our ethic as a, as a culture. We have abandoned primary ethics in our culture that no society has ever made it back. So take note of the reports of where we are right now. It's dark and getting darker. In our culture, in our community, there, there's a pervasive fog around things that were once core. So listen, facts as it pertains to faith, are, they're, they're not something to be afraid of. Like we should see these things. They're factually true. Things are bad right now, right here in our country. But I heard a pastor say recently, and it just my spirit leapt. When I heard him, he says, the darker it becomes, the more hopeful I am. The more hopeful I am. He said, because this is where God gets a people before he sends the next great move, before he sends the next great move. And it says in Habakkuk 3, right after that, in the midst of the years, revive it. In the midst of years, make it known in wrath, remember mercy. Bill talked about this a little bit. I had a moment that God walked me into, and I want to share this with you, and I got two more things. I, Katie and I are at our 10th anniversary several years ago now. Went to San Diego, and uh, if you if you know the San Diego area, it's gorgeous. Well, I'm a war buff guy. Like I I, I love uh, military branches of service, all those things. And so you go to Coronado Island, and man, you're well, where you're where Navy SEALs are. Like I'm walking down the street and telling Katie, like that guy can kill me, that guy can kill me, that guy can kill me, because you're you're walking around with Navy SEALs. Well, there's a Navy SEAL barber shop right outside the base. And I asked Katie, uh, this is funny stuff now, on our anniversary trip, can I go in there and get a haircut where Navy SEALs get their haircut? Because if you get a haircut there, you automatically know how to kill people three new ways, right? You know, that's it. At least in my mind, I'm thinking that. Well, I walk in there in humor to get a haircut, uh, but God walked me into a moment. So I get there and there's one, uh, there's one barber there, he's cutting hair. And then when I get there, coming through the back door, a guy starting his shift, an older man, and he says, come on, come sit down. And I sit down and he asked me, the honestly, the dreaded question right off the bat, because I want to get to know you, hopefully get to talk to you about the Lord a little bit there. He says, so what do you do? So I'm a, I'm a pastor. He turns the clippers off. So I'm like, oh man, I'm in trouble, right? He said, well, let me tell you how I got to California. I said, sure. He said, well, I was from Chicago, and uh, somebody told me you can cut hair anywhere. Where do you want to cut hair? Uh, why don't you go somewhere that's beautiful? He said, so I found myself in San Diego in the late 60s, early 70s. He said, a guy one day was getting his hair cut from me. He said, hey, man, you want to hang out tonight? And he said, yeah. He said, why don't we uh, we'll go eat some pizza and drink some beer together? So, okay, I'll pick you up right here after your shift's over. So the guy picks him up, uh, but he has deceived him because they're not going to eat pizza or drink beer. He takes them to Calvary Chapel Church to a worship service. And this barber tells me, he said, I went to go get pizza and beer, and I ended up being born again. And so he asked me, I'd just been in a conference. He said, do you, do you, see, you know who Greg Laurie is? I said, yeah, I, just, I actually just stood right beside him at a conference the week before that. And he said, well, I was there when Greg got baptized. So I, I was there when his life was changed. And he started telling me about that time. And I asked him one question. I said, hey, man, in light of living through that, what does it make you think about right now? I'm talking to you, Habakkuk 3 here, in the midst of the years revive it. And he said something very profound to me. He said, I feel like I'm reliving it all over again. There's political unrest sexual confusion, racial, racial tension, you know, all the implications of what comes with that around culture and society. He said, it's more toxic now, for sure. He said, but it's the same thing over again. And I asked him, so what does it make you think? He said, another move's coming. <laughs> another move's coming. For guys that live through it and now see this, I think what he's saying is he knows that's the only hope we have. That's the only hope we have. So I, I say that to say to our listeners today, recognize this. We're in a moment. We're in a moment, and we need a real move. We need a real move of God, and Habakkuk knew that. 
And so what Habakkuk did in verse 3, a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet, a prayer of the, of the prophet Habakkuk. So he says, in light of this, I'm going to pray that. In light of this, I'm going to pray that. Listen, prayer always starts with a person, and then it often moves to other people. Prayer often starts with a person, and it moves to other people. I want to encourage our listeners today, in light of the desire to see a real move of God, if prayer has to start with someone, be that someone. If prayer, if a move of God in your church has to start with someone, you be that someone. And then take it to some other people and pray and pray and pray until it spreads. You see this at the front of Habakkuk 3 and at the finish of Habakkuk 3. You see this, this recognizing the real moment you're in, a prayer for a real move of God, and then praise at the end of it. Listen to what it says in verse 17. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Meaning like, hey, if it's bad, it's bad. If we, if we check out the realities of destruction in our day, listen to what he says. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on high places. Listen, here's saying: if revival's coming, worship will be a part of it. It always is. Now, there are always songs in the movement of the Spirit. When the Spirit of God comes and moves in fresh ways, He gives us new songs. He gives us new songs. So here's my encouragement to us today. Recognize the moment we're in. Recognize the moment we're in. Pray the prayers you can pray. Pray the prayers you can pray for the next great move of God and be the first person to give Him right praise. Be the first person to give Him, to sing your song, to be a people that worship. And I believe, Bill, this is true, and you look at revival history, when God finds that kind of people, that kind of people, he pours out his spirit yeah. in a powerful way. So we've been saying over the last year and a half or so, this little phrase, it's time. Yeah. I mean, historically, it's time. Right. Uh, emotionally, it feels like it's time. Yeah. Culturally, it's time. Right. And there is erupting in all of us this cry. Yeah, Lord. Lord, do this. Now. Do this. We. We join Habakkuk mm-hmm. in this prayer. Mm. And uh, so, Father, Lord, there's nothing else to say. We we just cry out to you, yes. God. We need you so desperately. We thank you for you reminding us here in Habakkuk and through history that this is your necessary way. Mm. You do this because you know we need it. Mm-hmm. The mission demands it, Lord. And uh, you let us be a part of it. So, Father, don't let us miss the moment. Don't let us, Lord, and we, we want to see it in our day. And we don't want to see our work. We don't want to see a fake revival. Right. We don't want to see a humanistic revival and then call it God. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, revive your work in the midst of our days in a way that is unexplainable and and therefore lord nobody right. gets the glory right. but you and uh just don't let us miss it mm. and everything that you want us to do in preparation for that and and having a tender heart like Josiah mm. and a humble response and coming like Habakkuk with a prophet's prayer That's right Lord, and in full cooperation with you, Lord, help us to be ready and that you would find us praying and trusting you. And then, Lord, do your work, and we we will give you all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Well, what a word. Thank you so much, Kyle. And I... I really would encourage you to go back. We've we've spent the last three weeks yeah. on Habakkuk three, mm-hmm. and uh, maybe just bundle that up, those links to that, and send it to a friend. Yeah, and I mean, it doesn't take a long time. Uh, just uh, you you sit down and binge on a <laughs> you know on a Netflix. Yeah. So 
uh, encourage, get a, get a group of people together, mm -hmm. get your small group together and say, hey, for the next three weeks, we're going to take about 15 minutes, listen mm -hmm. to this, and then we're going to pray right. Come and on. cry out to God. So we hope that you'll join us again as we mm -hmm. unite in one cry for the necessary, extraordinary movement of God's Spirit. Well, we're so glad that you're joining us on our One Cry podcast. And if you want more, uh, we can point you to a very easy site to get more. That's onecry.com. Uh, there are all kinds of resources there. There's a place where you can give and contribute to the cause of revival and spiritual awakening. Also, right on the front page of onecry.com are some pathways to to just hit a button that will take you into all kinds of resources for your personal, your church, or a national, a journey into national revival and spiritual awakening. Just a lot of very helpful tools. So uh, check it out at onecry.com. 